a family-owned shop in Loganville, Sosby's Garage for all your automotive repair needs. We service all makes and models, Ford and domestic. We repair engines, alternators, brakes, alignments, AC systems, and more, using certified technicians with over 90 years of combined experience. We also offer same-day service for some repairs. Sosby's Garage, 200 Bay Creek Road in Loganville. Dependable, honest, and fair. Look us up on Google or Facebook. We'll take good care of you. Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. We are the cornerstone of security in the Southeast. Welcome, everybody, to Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services and sponsored by Sosby's Garage, family-owned and local automotive shop in Loganville, Georgia. Uh, give them a call if you need any kind of honest repairs on your car. 200 Bay Creek Road in Loganville. Call Big John at 678-825-2127. Well, I'm your host, Rick Strawn, the president of Paradigm Security Services, and we're excited to be with you today on Business X Radio X. We are coming to you from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio, located in beautiful Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel in Duluth, Georgia. Each week, for those that uh, are familiar, we, you know we plan on featuring businesses in the Atlanta area, especially those that serve Gwinnett County. While all businesses have security concerns, not all are about physical security, and we'll touch on that in all related aspects of security through the course of each show. My guest today, I'm pleased to have Josvelli, we'll call her Jojo uh, Tavares. She's a senior police officer with the Gwinnett Crime Prevention uh, in the Central Precinct, the Gwinnett County Police Department. Glad to have you here, Jojo. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Hey, I'm always, uh, this is right in my you know home sweet spot when talking to law enforcement because that's, that's the sweet spot of my heart for being from law enforcement background myself. Let me just start out with a, the normal way we start out. Who is Officer Torres? Who is Josefili Tor- uh, Tavares? Well, I am a female officer in the Gwinnett County Police Department. I've been with the department for about three years. Um, I've been in Georgia for about three and a half years. So I came down from New York. Um, I was born and raised in the Bronx, Bronx, New York. And I'm getting used to it now, getting used to the different cultures. I'm Dominican, so I grew up around Dominicans, Puerto Ricans. Um, so over here is like a variety of a lot of people. And I love the culture and how nice people are here. So that's why I wanted to give back to this community. Well, that's us. We're uh, kind of a mosaic. Uh, our culture and diversity here in Gwinnett County is what the nation is probably going to look like in about 10, 20 years. Uh, it's where it will eventually be. We have, gosh, we have every, every ethnic yeah. race that there could possibly be, I think, within this county, which is a great thing. And Definitely. we're glad to have you here as a representative of the Puerto Rican community and just a good American all the way around. Um, how many precincts does Gwinnett County have? As of now, we have six precincts. Um, so back in December, we opened up. Um, our sixth one in Grayson Mm -hmm. and we have one in Norcross which is our first precinct district one Um, and we just have them throughout Gwinnett County. I know you work out of the central precinct yes which is there at Gwinnett Place Mall Uh, that's which is also within our uh, CID here our community improvement district that we do security for Um, then we have the uh, I guess the West Precinct is over there off Jimmy Carter, right? Yes, it's off Jimmy Carter. Once you get off 85, it'll be on the right side. Yeah, be on the west side of uh, 85 there. Yes. Yeah, that that's where I did my ride along and stuff. That's that's a nice active precinct. That's where I started at. <laughs> that's <laughs> of course I'm Hispanic, and there's a lot of Hispanics there's a in lot that of Hispanic precinct. In that over there, as well so. as Central, of course, here in this district. Um, but I started over there, and I miss it. Because I started there, so I was, like, born <laughs> there. Um, but, yeah, it's well, in my cross. you're in c- the uh, crime prevention unit. Correct. And I know I'm familiar with it, but a lot of our listeners might not be familiar with what the crime prevention unit really does. Can you kind of talk our way through it and 
what you do, what your depart, what your division does, and what you particularly do, and kind of walk us through a normal day in your activity. So basically, a lot of people might think that police officers only arrest people that you know we don't care and we don't do anything for the community. However, we have this unit just to go out and build the relationship with the community. Um, I'm not sure if other counties or city departments all have a crime prevention unit, um, but Gwinnett County does. And every precinct has their own crime prevention officer. So I'm only the crime prevention officer in District 5, which is Central Precinct. However, sometimes I go and help out the other crime prevention officers, and they help me out. Um, What we basically do, um, we do a lot of events with the community, like back-to-school drives, um, multicultural festival. We go out to businesses, um, homes, and speak about security measures. Uh, we Any complaint that we have, we go out and try and investigate further, like if there's people speeding or um, actively noise complaints and stuff like that. So we're always trying to build um, relationship with the communities. We also partner with a lot of organizations, um, and whatever event they have going on, we try and go out there to attend and build that relationship. Well, it sounds like you stay pretty busy. Yes, <laughs> for the most part we don't. Well, I know that when the, the if business people or people in the community, residents or whatever, have questions and they want to, say, for you to come out and speak to their group or their homeowner association or something, y'all are welcome. You know, y'all are happy to do that. Of course. And we'll get uh, contact numbers and all that a little bit later, but I know that's part of what you do. A lot of people call it Community Relations Division, uh, Crime Prevention Unit. Um, we I know Atlanta has both. So we have like both but mixed together. Right. Um, so basically the crime prevention officer is the one that do both at the same time. Um, so I go out and speak to people on their business and events, but I also have my cops communities that I have to um, set up a meeting every year. And if there's something going on in the neighborhood, then I have to go and respond to them. So the way you get on board with that is that you have to send me an email and I get you in contact with the coordinator. And then once you're done with the process, you're back to me, and then I go and just um, do area checks in your neighborhoods and make sure everything is okay. Tell me a little thick, a little bit about the, the COPS uh, organization and stuff that you were talking about. So I guess in other cities and counties, they call it, I think is, uh, what is it, Neighborhood Watch mm-hmm. um, program. So it's kind of similar to that. Um, basically, we have the relationship, direct relationship with the neighbors and whoever's living in the neighborhood. Um, so we do annual meetings, so I go to their home or we set it up at another location and we talk about prevention tips like um, how to prevent burglaries, Indian autos, if they're having a problem with suspicious people. Um, I try and always encourage them to call you know, 911 or let me know if they see a trend of a vehicle always passing by um, at a certain time, they let me know, and I, I'm able to set up for officers to go to their neighborhood and go around the same time. So it's kind of like a direct relationship with one officer, so they're always seeing my face. Do you also participate in the shop with a cop and coffee with a cop and all that kind of stuff? Yes, we try and do coffee with a cop at least twice a year for every precinct. Um, we haven't scheduled it yet, to be honest, but we did have one last, uh, I think it was in around October. Um, so that should be coming up soon. Those always go over really well. They're, they're a lot of fun. If, if anybody's never been there, which I would imagine a lot of people haven't, if you really want to get to know the officers from a different side and a different you know, personality, the, the, what, who they really are, that's a good one to go to. Of course. Uh, and I think kids are welcome, too, because that way the kids get to interact with them at the same time. Yes, and we try when it gets warmer to do activities with the kids, um, like in the parks and in school. But since it's a little bit chilly now, we try and do it inside. <laughs> so I go to a lot of career days. Um, so I was just at a career day um, in Bethesda Elementary, mm-hmm. which is in this district. And I greeted about... 700 kids and they all had a question so it was pretty interesting i love interacting with the community especially the kids because they're our future we do i do that a lot with the uh principal for a day with the chamber you get in there into a particular school and i mean you're interacting with all the kids you're reading to them you're you're it's it's a blessing what it is to be able to do something like that because we got a bunch of special kids in this area and it's a lot of fun to interact with them and I know from coming from law enforcement, 
it helps to be able to interact with them as a uniform officer so that they get a little comfort level and can appreciate the, you know, these are people. They're here to protect you. They're here to help you. They're not here to, you know, th- grab you up, throw you in jail. I know when I had, uh, when I was back in uniform, I'd go up and I'd have some parents tell me, you being, you know, tell their kids, you be nice or I'm going to have that man put yeah, you in jail. You. Mm-hmm. And I usually always would look at the kids and say, you don't have to worry about it. What we do is we put the parents that threaten little kids with jail in jail. <laughs> so and yeah. the parents, the kids always smile. The parents just kind of get big eyed. I mean, yeah, it's something, you know, that I guess as parents, sometimes we don't see or think anything more than it. Um, but it kind of. It, We're teaching I guess our it, kids. Yeah, exactly. There's sometimes that I go to these events and there's kids that don't even want to say hi to me because they're scared of me. And then by the end of the of the um, day, they're all hugging me and stuff because I'm like, "We're humans, just like you. You know, you shouldn't be scared of the police because we protect you." Well, that's a learned uh, experience. You mm-hmm. know, they learn from their parents, they learn from their peers, they learn from their teachers, and unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize. When they when they talk about police officers, they talk negative about them. Ninety nine point nine percent of police officers are really good people. You have that bad egg every once in a while. But and that's everywhere. I mean, <laughs> absolutely, it's every profession, it's every business. The thing about police officers, if you have a bad egg, they always float to the top, and you get rid of them. Yes, exactly. But to scare kids with that idea of you know you you got to walk a fine line, you got to be careful, you got to be careful. I used to be afraid of saying you know copper around a cop and you know that as a kid because that was always drummed through our heads and the kids have got to have this understanding and at ease and know that they that we're here to help them exactly well you know i know that you have uh in this area we have a lot of entering an auto uh problems here uh, all the way up through to sugar loaf all the way down uh down into decab and a lot of it's because it's the 85 corridor, and there's a lot of targets here. And, you know, can you give some people some personal tips on, on that and, you know, tell us a little bit about the issues that are going on around here? So with Central Precinct, um, we have other precincts that also have, you know, luxury, I guess, restaurants with the Mall of Georgia. Um, but Pleasant Hill is a very... I guess in rich area where there's a lot of restaurants, dealerships, um, nice houses and, and anything that you could think of. So we're right next to Atlanta kind of. Um, and so we have these people that come in here, commit these crimes and then leave. Um, so unfortunately, Indian autos are our worst enemy right now because we tend to have at least every month about 100 or so or more. Um, and more than half of them are unlocked vehicles. And it's something that unfortunately we can't prevent. Only the person who is um, who the vehicle belongs to can prevent it. I know sometimes we're in a rush and we might have thought we locked the vehicles and we didn't. Um, however, I always encourage people to make it a habit before they leave their um, leave, leave their vehicles to just pick open their their lock to see to make sure if it's um, open pull or pull the handle. Yeah, something because unfortunately more than half of these vehicles that are getting broken into is not forced is all non-force and it's because they're leaving their vehicle unlocked and there's guns in there um computers anything you could think of a value is in the vehicle while the vehicle is unlocked and of course we don't want one gun on the streets in the hands of bad guys so i always try to encourage people to take their values um and lock their vehicles if you're gonna you know especially in a hotel or in a gas station because we've seen that People have um, left their vehicles running and unlocked because they're gonna. They think they're gonna they're just, just gonna run, run in, and yeah, run, run in and run out, and that doesn't always happen. There's somebody watching. Um, we've seen it in video surveillance where these incidents happen. They're watching till they go in. They go in right away. They run up and they take the vehicle, and then that's it. And of course, um, we get to investigate and stuff. But it's something that you could prevent. If you're gonna run inside, you don't know what's who's looking at you. You don't know who's um, waiting to, you know, see somebody who could potentially be a victim, and then you become that victim. Um, so just always try and lock your vehicles. Don't leave your vehicle running if you're leaving the vehicle, and take all your values as well. Well, absolutely. If you leave the vehicle, turn it off. 
Take of the keys course. with you. Lock the door. And people think now with these, I think, key fobs now that when you get a certain amount of range, then the vehicle shuts down, and it's not like that. Nope. There's vehicles that you could run it and run it and run it. It's not until you shut it down um, that you press the push start button or even turn it off that it shuts down. Um, so even if you have the key, they could still get in the vehicle and drive it wherever they want. To. Oh, absolutely. And there are so many... There's so many new twists to technology today oh, Lord, yeah. that the people are bypassing these locks. Uh, they can get on a computer and with the right software and the right knowledge and understanding, they can enter your car. And I know from a security, private security uh, standpoint, it's really tough because, you know, you may have somebody out there, uh, one of these hotels or something, and have them out there watching the parking lots. And people think, well, that's okay. We got a security officer out here. They're watching the parking lot. But if somebody is quick and, and they don't have to break a window, so there is, I mean, no attention. They just they just walk up, open mm-hmm. the door, and it takes them, you know, five six seconds to clean out a car. And they have generally a lot of people don't realize they generally walk through the they survey it, they look at it, they figure out what they're going to hit, when they're going to hit it as they're walking through. And then they'll leave for a little while, and then they'll come back and hit those specific targets that they've made. And with no broken glass, people don't even, you know, the officer's not even going to be aware that it's been hit. Yeah, and, and I mean, let's take this hotel. It's a really pretty big parking lot, right? So mm-hmm. one officer for this parking lot, I mean, the officer could be on one end, and this thing could happen on another end until the person doesn't go to the vehicle and see, hey, I think something is not, you know, somebody went through my vehicle. How is the officer going to know? You know, most of the time they close the, the doors. So Absolutely. if you're walking by a parking lot, you don't see anything suspicious, you're just going to keep on walking. Um, and a lot of people think that just because nothing was taken, they shouldn't do a report. Um, however, we always encourage to do a report, Absolutely. especially with entering auto, because just entering your auto is a felony. And also if... There was one in auto over here and then another one in the next hotel on the same street. If you don't call police in, then we won't know that there's a trend. So if this guy always come, you know, from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. and he hits hotels um, on Pleasant Hill Road, but nobody calls it in, then how are we going to know to try and solve these problems? Exactly. You've got to, you've got to, you know, if you see it, report it. If you see it, speak up. Yeah. Everyone thinks, oh, well, nothing was taken. It's a waste of time. No. You know, always call 911 because we need to keep track of the um, crimes that are going on in the area. And just going inside vehicle is a felony. So, Yeah, I and mean, a lot of people felt that feeling like, well, I don't, you know, there's, I don't see anything taken. It's obvious they went in, but I don't see anything taken. And the officer's not going to want to come over here and do it. Well, the officer really doesn't mind doing a report on something like that. It, especially with the computer. It's not like back in my day when we had paper reports that we had to yeah, it's fill like out everything. Yeah. Now you can do drop downs. The computers are there. I mean, it it takes no time at all to do an entering auto report. So and they sometimes don't mind. we could take it over the phone. We don't always have to exactly. go to you. So you could just That's say, um, you know, I need a report. It's okay to handle um, via telephone. And we take it over the phone. We give you a case number and you have it. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people say that they would much rather leave their vehicle unlocked um, to the, um, rather than paying for a broken window. Um, which I guess to each his own, but if that happens, if someone is in your vehicle, then always call call it in. Remember to call it in. Absolutely. It's better to be safe than sorry. Always. And there's no telling how many people you're going to help out by making that report. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know calling police for suspicious people and vehicles, you know, that's a very important thing for people to do, and a lot of people don't do it because they just don't want to take the time or they don't want to bother somebody or they don't think they'll, they'll, they'll be gone. But, uh, you know, paying attention, taking descriptions and stuff. Tell us, you know, what the police approach to that is and what your thoughts of it are. Um, so it's kind of like the same thing with the entering autos. If nothing was taken, I'm not going to call it in. Um, they think if they're not actively committing a crime, if the person is just hanging around their house or, you know, um, outside parked in the home for 15 minutes, then they're waiting for something and there's nothing going on. Um, however, it can be different. Maybe there is some illegal activity that they're, you know, looking to, to get or waiting to get or whatnot. Um, so we always encourage to call it in. There has been times where we have pulled over people and we don't give them a ticket, but we give them a warning. Um, that way their information is in our system. So in case a crime happens, let's say 
two months, two years, three years, or ten years afterwards, we will have that person's um, information in our system, and we'll we'll be able to investigate um, even further. There has been cases where I've heard where somebody was pulled over. Um, he committed a murder like maybe a year after, two years after. And because of that pullover warning ticket that was given to him, they were able to identify him. Um, so it goes to say, even though you think it's something so simple, it can help us in the long run. Absolutely. And if they're doing something illegal, then of course we'll be there to investigate and arrest. But if they're not, then we're just simply just talking to them and making sure everything is okay. Well, it's all about getting little bits and pieces of information that, that's like a puzzle. And you may have this part of the puzzle that was put in here a year ago, but then something happens way down the line that that little piece all of a sudden connects all the dots. Exactly. And so each little, each little dot has a, has a reason and a, and a good thing to have. Uh, I guess you're familiar with the flock system. Yes. Uh, is there it, it, there's some of it coming in around the Gwinnett Place area? What's your thoughts on that system? I know mine. Um. Well, it's a pretty. It's for sure a pretty good system. We have had success with it. Um. I think now we're working on trying to get the officers to all get used. Um. I guess access to it because I think there's only certain officers that have access to it. Um. But it's very very good system. And we are grateful for you guys and whoever else is involved um, getting it because it has helped us with cases. That uh, that system is one of the best systems I've ever seen working. I wish we'd have had it back in the old days. We could have done a lot of crime prevention, a lot of s crime solution back in those days because it's uh, really awesome. One thing I'd like to see done is I would like to see, like I've got – three uh three vehicles that are patrol in in the uh gateway 85 community with the cid i've got an officer here that patrols in the uh gwinnett place cid i'd like to see that uh, you know somewhere along the way and eventually get to where our officers have connection to that flock and can can see and and you know to a certain extent not the full capacity but to of a certain course. extent and be able to interact I think that having those extra eyes out there would be a tremendous benefit to the to the police officers in the community. Yes, anything we could get, that of course, will help us. Well, I'm going to have to talk to your new chief about that. <laughs> so, uh, but I think that would be a tremendous benefit to y'all to have all those extra eyes out there during those periods of time. And even with the doorbell cameras, like Ring, Ring and all yep. these um, other cameras, they have helped us a lot because with burglaries, I mean... Most of the time when these burglaries are committed, people are not home. They don't know what's going on until they get home. A lot so, of time during the daytime. Yeah, because they know that a lot of people are, of course, working and in school. So every time that we get a burglary, we try and encourage people, even though it didn't happen, you know, in on in your house or if it happened like three houses down or up from you, then try and at least look for videos or any suspicious um, cars, any car speeding, any car driving slow. If you see that same car five times on one day, you know, just try and get that information out to us if you do have a doorbell camera because that has helped us tremendously as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of information that can be garnered from that type of equipment that are just sitting around neighborhoods. Uh, it's, it's a tremendous benefit on these burglaries and stuff. Because you, like you say, you've got a car. Generally, they don't just run in there, hit a house. They they drive around yep. for numerous they times. It may be before. an hour, two hours that they're riding around the neighborhood, just figuring out what's the best location, and that always shows up on these cameras, or a lot of times shows up on the cameras, and it's fantastic. Yes. Um, one of the big things, and a lot of people don't think it, that police officers really understand it or they even think about it is victim rights and i know that that is a big thing with police departments and a big concern uh, a lot of people think we're you know we're not worried about the victim rights we just want to go out and put people in jail and this kind of stuff but talk a little bit about victim rights because i know it's an important thing yes yeah, so um about two years ago i actually had a case where um this family they weren't from here i think they were from venezuela um his father was showing symptoms of a heart attack about three hours uh, prior to him calling us. So he said because he was scared of the police because I guess um, they were undocumented, uh, he didn't want to call it in. So he, just, he was waiting for his father to get better. Unfortunately, three hours later, his father had passed away. 
And his father has been in the bedroom for about 30 minutes until he finally decided to call us. Um, so I got there, and that story really touched me because I'm like, yeah, wow, absolutely. you know, like he could have mm-hmm. called us before, and um, his father would have been alive, but just because he was scared, uh, he didn't know his, you know, his rights as a victim or just a, a person calling 911. Uh, so unfortunately, his father passed away because he was just scared. Um, so I'm just here to say that if you are a victim or you're just calling in a, a crime happening or occurring, we are only getting your information to get in contact with you. We're not getting your information to, to run it through ICE. First of all, Gwinnett County Police, we don't deal with ICE. That's the Sheriff Department. So Gwinnett County Sheriff Office, they deal with ICE um, and immigration and stuff like that. We don't. We're, if your crime is committed, we're arresting you and that's it. Um, if you're a victim, we're taking your information to, in case we have any um, other you know, questions or anything, of course, if it's a case going on, then we need your information because you're a victim. But it's not anything to do with um, ICE and we don't check if you're undocumented or not. And I think a lot of people don't know that. And unfortunately, that's so a lot of crimes are not being reported when they should be. Well, and it's a matter of life. I mean, it's important. Yes, illegal immigration is important, and it's an important issue on the nation right now. But when it comes down to, you know, a life of someone, that's got to be on the low end of the priority. That, you know, I, and I know from a police standpoint, that's not the focus of that officer. That officer is focused on getting that person help, keeping them alive, uh, doing what they can for the situation to make it better they're you know they're not interested in well let me see your green card let me see your papers that's just not it and and after it's all over with nobody's going to come back to that house and say okay we see here that someone that is from venezuela uh had this call and everything let let me take a look and let me see your documentation papers that's just not going to happen yeah that does not happen unless you're a suspect that's a different process um because of course is uh, through the court system, you have to go through the court system, and that's a process that they deal with. But if you're a victim or you're a witness of a crime, then that has nothing to do with us. We're just there to help you if we can, and to arrest whoever committed the crime. No, I think that's uh, that's an important message to get out because uh, it really affects people on their day to day lives, uh, especially in our county. Yes, that story area. really like mind blown me because I'm like, wow, it was so sad, you know, like. I talked to him afterwards because, of course, I'm Hispanic. Um, so I told them, like, you know, you could call us um, if you've seen him having, you know, some type of uh, illness. He, I think he was, like, very weak and he had a fever. You could have called us. We were just making sure we arrived with the ambulance to make sure nothing foul play or anything was happening. But more than likely, he would have probably still been alive. So, And that's, that's something really that he's going to have to live with for the rest of his life. And that's yes, unfortunate. Exactly. You know, that, it's hard enough to lose a parent, but to know that there's something that you could have done, done that, kept them alive, that might have kept them alive. No no guarantees, but might have very well kept them alive. Uh, that's, that's a hard thing to live with for the rest of your life. I know that we talked earlier about public events and different things going on. Uh, have y'all got some public events that are coming up here with the county uh, in the community? Um, so I usually try and do events every month or so. However, like I said, it's kind of cold out, um, so I haven't done one yet. However, um, on April 18th at Pickneyville Park, the soccer complex, we're having our multicultural festival. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. My first time going was last year, and I loved it. It was really it was beautiful. Um, you get to meet all of the officers, crime prevention officers from each precinct. So if you don't live in Central Precinct, you can meet them in the other precincts, as well as community organizations. And um, there's a lot of dance involved and a different culture. It's multicultural festival, so you get to learn about different cultures within the county. Well, you know, there's so much that goes on in that area. Uh, what was the date that you said that was, April? April 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That'll be in Pickneyville Park, the soccer complex. Awesome. That's in, uh, like, around West Precinct in Norcross. Well, if anybody wanted to get in touch with you about these events or find out what's coming up or what's going on or anything like that, how would they go about doing that? Well, my uh, work phone number is 678-442-6544. 678 678- Four four two six five four four. All right. What about uh, any type of? Um, 
I know the county uh, the county has a Facebook. Yes. Uh, do you know that Facebook off the top of your head? It's Gwinnett County Police, I believe. At Gwinnett County Police. Yes. Okay. I believe it is. And that's something they can interact with. Well, I would suggest liking it and getting on it so that you get information and. I think all of these community issues and community events and stuff will be coming up on that Facebook and Definitely, getting pre-noticed yes. and, and out. Is there anything else that you would like to uh, pass along uh, as far as just general information about y'all? Just don't be afraid to speak with us. I mean, if you see us in the gas station, on a call or whatever, just say hi to us. You know, you never know. An officer is a human, too. So sometimes we have off days and a simple smile, a simple hi could probably brighten up our days. Um, if the public have any questions in regards to anything, I'm always here. Um, I'm here to even listen to you if you have just if you want somebody to talk to. I'm here for anything. So I provided my information. Make sure you contact me. I'm always waiting for people. Kind <laughs> to of the contact. old thing: keep it cool, don't be a fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, I, and you know it's it's such great having you here. I hope we can do this again before too awfully long as your events start coming up. Maybe we can. Get you back on here and talk about some of the upcoming events. Yes. And, um, you know, having officers with Gwinnett County, uh, knowing them, getting to know them as a, as a community is so important. And I hope that uh, people reach out, take your kids to these events, because it's important that kids understand that law enforcement are here to help them. They're not here to beat them up. They're not here to just throw them in jail. They're here to help these people any way they can. And a lot of people just don't understand that that's, I know when I first came on with the police department way back, way back when, <laughs> my idea was I'm going to come in and I want to do all of this stuff. I want to save the world. Well, you find out real quick that most of the time, most of your time when you get here, it's already hit the fan. So when you're getting there, you're just trying to keep people alive. Exactly. And calm things down. And it's hard to – someone when the, with the community relations and the crime prevention departments, they're able to reach out and do what all of us would like to do, and that is be a, make it a better community. And yeah, work and, with the, and when I got to the unit, I'm like, wow. Like, you know, it's a, it amazes me how just speaking to people, you could get, you know, a relationship. and. Anything that they have, they there is so easy to contact you. I thought getting into this unit was gonna be a little bit hard, um, because I'm like, people don't like police like that. <laughs> like <laughs> they're not gonna they're not gonna come out to these events. They're not really gonna care. But I'm fortunate enough for um, Gwinnett County Police is fortunate enough to have people that actually support us. Uh, we're having a back to school event in July. I don't know the exact day. Of course, when I come back, I'll provide that information. Mm -hmm. But we had one last year. We were giving out um, school supplies, and we had over 500 people attend. And they it started at 9, and there was people there 7 waiting for us. So it kind of goes to show that we have impacted people, Great. and we do have that support. So I'm very happy to be in the unit, and I can't wait to meet more people. Well, I hope we get a lot more officers like you that are out there in this type of position. Thank you. Well, again, I want to... Um, Thank you for joining us on Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. I want to thank Jojo Dolores, again, Senior Police Officer with the Crime Prevention Unit in Central Precinct here in Gwinnett County Police Department for coming on as a guest. It's been very enjoyable and very informative. Thank you for having me. And uh, just a quick note for our sponsor, Sosby's Garage. They're dependable, honest, and fair. And uh, actually, they're, they have a nice, clean lobby, and it's very inviting. They'll even provide some snacks for you if you're lucky. Uh, call Big John, 678-825-2127 yeah, on Bay Creek, 200 Bay Creek Road in Loganville, Georgia. Well worth the drive. Remember, you can join us live every Wednesday at 1130 in the morning, or you can listen to our show anytime you want by going to businessradiox.com, clicking on the Gwinnett Studio and then click on, of course, Case in Point. Join us next week at 1130. We will talk with business leaders about their businesses and related security issues in today's world. Thanks to my again to my guest, Judge Otavares, officer with Gwinnett County Police Department. And for my producer, Mike Salmon. And again, I'm Rick Strawn. And remember, at Paradigm Security Services, we cover more than just your assets.